The Avro Canada VZ-9 Avrocar was a VTOL aircraft developed by Avro Canada as part of a secret U.S. military project carried out in the early years of the Cold War. The Avrocar intended to exploit the Cohen effect to provide lift and thrust from a single turborotor, blowing exhaust out of the rim of the disc-shaped aircraft. Originally designed as a fighter-like aircraft capable of very high speeds and altitudes, the project was repeatedly scaled back over time and the U.S. Air Force eventually abandoned it. In flight testing, the Avrocar proved to have unresolved thrust and stability problems that limited it to a degraded, low-performance flight envelope. Subsequently, the project was cancelled in September 1961. Avro referred to the efforts as Project Y, with individual vehicles known as Spade and Omega. When the U.S. Army joined the efforts it took on its final name, Avrocar, and the designation, VZ-9, part of the U.S. Army's VTOL projects in the VZ series. The Avrocar was the ultimate result of a series of Blue Skies research projects by designer, Jack, Frost, who had joined Avro Canada in June 1947 after working for several British firms. At Avro Canada, he had worked on the Avro CF-100 before creating a research team known as the Special Projects Group. At times, the SPG also operated out of the experimental hangar where it shared space with other esoteric Avro project teams. At the same time, the aircraft industry as a whole was becoming increasingly interested in VTOL aircraft. Some of these solutions included rocket-launched aircraft like the zero-length launch concept, while many companies started work on VTOL aircraft as a more appropriate long-term solution. Frost felt the excellent performance of his new engine would be a natural fit for a VTOL aircraft due to its high expected power-to-weight ratio. In the ACE design, these were located just to the front of the center on the top and bottom of the aircraft. Most designers turned to bleeding off air from the engine's compressor, and directing that through pipes arranged around the aircraft. On the 11th of February 1953, a story on the project was leaked to the Toronto Star along with images of the Omega design, apparently in order to gain further funding. Frost felt the effect could be used with his engine design to produce a more practical VTOL aircraft, the exhaust flowing outward over the upper surface of the aircraft and then being directed downward over a flap-like arrangement. Somewhere along the way, Frost co-opted the tour and rerouted it to the special projects area where he proceeded to show off the Project Y mock-up and models and drawings for a completely circular disc-shaped aircraft known as Project Y2. The USAF agreed to take over funding for Frost's special projects group, and a contract for US$750,000 followed in 1955. In March 1957, the Air Force added additional funding, and the aircraft became Weapons System 606A. A wide variety of designs were studied for a VTOL fighter aircraft, all revolved around the disc shape, leading to the Project 1794 involving a supersonic large disc fighter aircraft. As Project 1794 was developed, Avro Canada proposed a version of the Project Y, the TS-140, to meet the United States Navy's specification TS-140 for a VTOL fighter aircraft in 1956, it was rejected by the Navy. The article went on to describe such an aircraft with diagrams that were clearly influenced by the Avro design. To gather flight data on the basic concept while the engine development continued, in 1958 Frost proposed building a smaller proof-of-concept test vehicle he called the Avrocar. Initial performance requirements for the Avrocar were a 10-minute hover capability in ground effect and 25-mile range with a 1,000 LB payload. The new plan appeared to make everybody happy, and a $2 million joint services contract managed by the Air Force was awarded to Avro to build and test two Avrocars, which the Army referred to as the VZ-9AV, the latest in a series of VZ aircraft. Additional Air Force funding of approximately $700,000 was also moved to the Avrocar project. The ensuing result was the layoff of almost all Avro Canada employees, including those with the Special Projects Group. The USAF project office devoted to the Avro projects, recommended that the WS-606A and all related work be cancelled. The Avrocar was a disc-shaped aircraft with the same basic shape as a Frisbee, the upper surface of the disc being fairly curved, and the bottom much less so. The undercarriage of the Avrocar was rudimentary with three small castering wheels mounted on stub shafts, a set of skids was substituted later in testing although they were not normally fitted. Until control problems were completely solved, the Avro test pilots acquired a touch for the extremely sensitive control inputs and Avro aircraft chief development test pilot Pototsky was eventually able to demonstrate a hands-off flight. Avro test pilot Peter Cope, USAF project pilot Walter J. Hodgson and NASA's Ames Research Center chief test pilot Fred J. Drinkwater III 
who all flew the Avricar, considered it still a tricky vehicle to fly. From the 9th of June to the 7th of October 1959, it was tested in a static hover rig. The first Avricar at Ames was similarly modified, and, in April 1960, it was tested in their 40 feet 80 feet wind tunnel. The new control system covered the rear three, fours of the aircraft's outer circumference, the front section featured the hovering controls only. Frost's proposals for a modified design were not accepted, and the Avricar and related WS-606A supersonic VTOL programs were officially cancelled in December 1961 by the US military. Avro company executives encouraged additional VTOL research projects, exploring new configurations married to a disc platform and even a lift jet version, but no further interest resulted from Canadian or other sources, to cap the end of this special projects group program. In 1961, a number of later proposals, including the Avro P-470 VTOL fighter concept derived from the Special Projects Group, were submitted to fulfill a NATO competition for a tactical strike fighter. The second Avricar had logged about 75 flight hours at the end of the flight testing. Company designer John Frost applied for a number of patents in Canada, the UK and the US that established the pivotal role that the Avricar and related Avro experimental vehicles made in the VTOL world. The Avro VZ-9 Avricar was a dead end in VTOL design, according to Russell Lee, curator at the National Air and Space Museum, yet its technological innovations have intrigued other designers. After successful tether tests, the saucer designs also at one time publicized as DiscoJet were abandoned and their latest project, the Mahler Skycar, has a flying car appearance. SN594975, utilized for flight testing, returned to Canada briefly for display in Montreal at the Man and His World exhibition. After a lengthy period of outdoor display, it is now under restoration at the U.S. Army Transportation Museum in Fort Eustis, Virginia.